Hola amigos, bienvenidos a clase bíblica. So that was not in English. Why not? Well, today we're going to get into some of that, and we'll talk about another one of many beginnings in the book of beginnings, Genesis. Let's get to it. So as we have talked about many times, Genesis is the book of beginnings. And whenever we start reading about the post-flood, in other words, after the flood and after Noah, and the generations to follow Noah and how the people once again forget God and they start to go astray, there's one guy in particular that we mentioned last time, rather unfortunate name, Nimrod. Nimrod is the son of Cush. He became a mighty warrior, and again, some translations, a mighty ruler on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. The centers of his kingdom were Babel or Babylon, Uruk, some translations will read Eric, E-R-E-C-H or K-H, um, Akkad and Kalne in Shinar. From that land he went to Assyria where he built Nineveh. These are all cities that we recognize, right? So then we get to Babel, and there's a reason that it's called Babel. It, Babel means confusion. Now, if you recall, they're building this giant tower, this very tall, that we call a ziggurat. It looks kind of like a temple. Uh, I'm sorry, it looks kind of like a pyramid, but it has steps as it goes up to the top and a stairway to get to the top. And on top usually is a little room where they would worship their so-called gods. Now, in the town of Babel, they were making a huge ziggurat, a very, very tall tower. God saw what they were doing and he did not like it because they were forgetting who he was. So he said, this is no good. We will go down and confuse their language. Let's read this. This comes from Genesis chapter 11, starting in verse 6. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So he confused their language. Their languages were no longer one. So the book of beginnings. Why was I speaking in Spanish at the very beginning? Because there is more than English in the world. In fact, English is a fairly new language. We didn't start out speaking English. Uh, English came on the scene much later. There are many other languages we've talked about before. Uh, the most common actually is Mandarin Chinese. How about that? Uh, but there are many languages. And where did those languages begin? Really, they had their beginning at Babel, confusion. So, another one of the beginnings, and this is why I emphasized this one city in particular, Uruk or Erek. That's an important city, and it was built by Nimrod, this, this mighty warrior, mighty ruler on the earth. It was apparently one of the first cities where writing was invented, another, if you will, beginning. Writing is an important thing. Whenever you think about the way that we communicate now, we have books, many, many books, and they're written with an alphabet. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? We have all the alphabet, letters of the alphabet. There's 26 of them. But we didn't start out with the alphabet. Again, English is a new language. Many, many years ago, you've probably heard of hieroglyphics and things like this, or cave paintings and such. Many, many years ago, they didn't, they didn't write with letters. They drew pictures or they made symbols. And when this first started out, writing was not about writing things down like stories or information. It was about keeping records. They may have written literally receipts for business transactions. Uh, one of the things that I found is actually a picture of a receipt of the purchase of oxen. And uh, it's interesting because they were keeping records more than they were doing anything. So they had pictures that they would draw. And at the beginning of a writing form called cuneiform, which is in Uruk, was one of the very first styles of writing ever. They used symbols. 
and there were over 2,000 symbols. There were so many to keep up with. So that writing form changed over time, and then it got down to where there were only 200 sim symbols. So it became much more accessible to more people who could actually be able to read it. And as that simplified, they started to write more than just records, business records and things like this. So today, we're actually going to spend a little bit of time looking at how did that work? How do you write in cuneiform? And I will have a picture of these symbols that are cuneiform symbols that you can look at. And we're going to spend a little bit of time with Plato and a writing stick. You can see that this writing stick is very different. Let me get it close. It's kind of a trapezoid shape. It has angle this way and this way, flat on the bottom and flat on the top. And you hold it sideways and you push it into your clay and make, make different marks. Whereas now I would hold a pencil like this and I would write very vertically. That was much more horizontally and you would write on the clay. So the beginning of all these things goes way back even to Genesis. And I think that's important for us to remember that the Bible is accurate historically. And that's a good reason for us to be able to trust that the Bible is true. Because it's accurate. And, and we can go back and look at things like the city of Uruk or Eric. And we know the Book of Beginnings records history accurately. And since it records history accurately, we can trust things like the flood. We can trust things like creation because of all the other accuracies. And God is who he says. So we're going to go over uh, to the kitchen table. We're going to get out some Play-Doh. So if you have some Play-Doh, you can do this with me. And then you can get a stick. It, it can be a pencil. Um, I made this from a dowel rod and I shaped it down. Uh, you can get a square stick. That might work pretty well for you. Um, or if you have a cuticle stick. Whatever you can come up with, you can mark in clay um, and you can do this with me. So we're going to go and see a little bit more about how does one write in cuneiform symbols. So we're going to try to write a couple of words in cuneiform and we're going to use these symbols as our guide. So I've already written a few. You'll be able to see um, the sun. That's this symbol right here. I've written mountain, which is this symbol or this one right here. And then on the bottom, I've written ox right here. So you don't write with a pencil like you would in English or a pen. You use a little stylus. It's kind of wedge shaped because cuneus, the word that cuneiform comes from in Latin, means wedge. So let's, let's write something simple. I want to use this symbol here. This means God or heaven in Assyrian. So what you do Take your stick, lay it along your modeling clay, or this is just Play-Doh, at an angle, we're gonna make a line, and then lift up, and it makes a wedge on the end. And then we need another wedge, just a little bit in front, and then we're going to go this way, and go across it, and make a wedge. Then you have this symbol here right there. So it's a different way of writing so that you do it differently instead of with an alphabet. And if you mess up, you can just press it out with your finger and reshape your, your clay or your play-doh and you can try it again. So let's do it one more time. A line and a wedge, another wedge, and then we'll go across it. And that's basically this symbol. God in heaven. So you can take these symbols and you can try to make your own with Play-Doh and a stick. It's kind of an interesting way of writing. It's definitely different than what I do. 
I guess I could get used to it. I almost have better handwriting in cuneiform than I do in English. Um, but most people could neither read nor write, and that included kings and nobles, these important people. But we know from archaeological evidence that there were schools that existed in ancient Mesopotamia. What is Mesopotamia? Really, whenever you look at what we call the Fertile Crescent, the, the Middle East, that part of the world where Israel is and Saudi Arabia and Turkey, uh, as we look at them today, that's the, the Middle East area. And that's really where society began. And we call that, that region Mesopotamia way back in history. Uh, think about Abraham and before. Uh, that would be Mesopotamia. So in that part of the world, there were schools. They called them tablet houses. And they had the, the uh, soft type of clay, sort of like Play-Doh, but clay's a little bit different in those. And, and you would learn about writing. You could learn math and religion and these kinds of things. Uh, and in writing became a very valuable skill and, in fact, a very respected skill in Mesopotamia because not very many people could actually do it like most of us can today. And there were scribes, people who would inscribe onto clay for other people. They would write on that clay. They kept records. They would write letters. They would do all those different things and copy down eventually stories and songs as their writing forms were getting more refined. So sometime around 2000 BC, there was a complete writing system. And again, it was based on the wedge shapes that you would make from this little stick because the word cuneus in Latin means wedge, and that's where we get cuneiform, the type of writing that we've been talking about. And so they would use that pointed stick like this, or maybe you could call it a stylus. We think of different things with stylus now. And they would make marks in the soft clay, and that would be how you would, you would write things down. And whenever you had what you needed written down, you would take your clay and you would bake it like you might bake um, bread today. And it would harden it. And then it would save that thing that you wrote down in the clay. And it was particularly important uh, to bake very important things so that they would be hardened. In fact, kind of an interesting story. In studying about this, they said that they came across a, a temple where there was a bunch of clay tablets that were saved because the temple caught on fire and burned down. Interesting, today that would destroy so many of our writings because we write on paper, they would burn up. But because they wrote on clay, the fire actually baked the clay and hardened it. And so now archaeologists can go and see those things that may otherwise have been destroyed. So it's interesting how the fire then actually preserved their writing and it would have destroyed ours. But that has allowed us to be able to study those writings and to develop translations from them and what were the people writing. And it's interesting, if you go and you start reading about this, how the translations of the things written changed over time with our understanding. There were apparently tablets that were found that they thought had Proverbs written on them, and as we learned more about the translation, they came to find that it was actually a list of various cuts of meat, which is kind of interesting that they had such different translations. And so as we've gotten more of those from things like this fire, they've understood, oh, this is what's being written down. And again, 90% of what was written down in cuneiform was actually records of, of like business transactions and laws and things like this, more than it was writing down uh, songs and stories, but that did start to happen later in time. So again, it's kind of interesting to read about these things and to know that it all start, oh, hey Toby, Bible class buddy, that all of these things began in Genesis, the book of beginnings. And by the time Moses was around, who actually recorded the book of Genesis, they had Hebrew, which is another language again. Where did the languages come from? Genesis chapter 11. And he wrote down in Hebrew with an alphabet the first five books of the Old Testament. Anyway, again, these things help me know these are not made up stories. The Bible is very trustworthy and is very legitimate. And all of these things that we know today began in the book of beginnings. So, hope this has been interesting. I hope that you can get some maybe cuneiform action going and, and write down some of your own things. If you do, post a picture of that. I'd like to see it. Anyway, good to have you with Bible class today. I'll see you next time.
Have a good week.